Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today's part two of my Students and Parents video series where I'm teaching you how to relate students to parents the right way. And I'll show you, show you the wrong way in part one. Well, not the wrong way, but not the best way. And today we're going to fix the database from part one and make it better. So if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one first and then come on back. All right, so yesterday we set up a parent table and we got a student table. And in our student table, we got two fields to track who the parents are. But the problem is, what if we want three parents or six parents or 25 parents or who knows how many parents, right? I don't want just combo boxes in here to pick two parents. And I don't want to add five because then, it, no, that's just no, no. It goes against all the proper rules for making databases. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a subform here that is going to allow us to pick as many parents or guardians as we want. But the, tr the, the trick here, the, the key here is we don't want to lose the data. I only got a couple in here right now, right? So it wouldn't be a big deal to just retype these. But the original questioner, Darren, says he's got thousands of them. You don't want to have to redo all that data, right? So we're going to copy it over using an append query. So the first thing we have to do is set up our junction table for our many-to-many -many relationship. So we're gonna create table design. This will be our parent X student table. So we're gonna start off with an ID, that's our auto number. Do you need that auto number? No, not really, you can get away without it. I have a personal rule that I always put an auto number in pretty much every table. Just in case later on, you've gotta write some code or do something that refers to that specific record, that specific relationship. Okay, and yeah, you could index no duplicates with a compound relationship. There's all kinds of things you can do, but the auto number just makes it simple. Okay, now in here, we're gonna have a parent, print, a parent ID, that's our number, and a student ID. All right, that's one relationship between one parent and one student. Now in here, you could also put any other information that you want about this specific pairing of a parent and a student, okay? If you wanna keep track of, you know, is this the primary guardian of the person? You could put that in here. Maybe we'll do that in a future video, all right? There's all kinds of things you can put in here about that relationship, uh, the date that it started. That, that would be good, for example, with employees and supervisors. What date did this person start being the, the supervisor of the team? That kind of stuff. Anything related to this relationship, right? It's not about the parent. It's not about the student. It's about the pairing of the two. Okay, so any of those other things can go in here. I will save this as my parent x student t. That's just how I name my junction tables, the relationship between the two. Does it matter if it's parent x student or student x parent? No, not really. It's the same either way. It doesn't matter. Okay, now... Normally, if I was setting this up from scratch and I was putting data in it without having to copy over existing data, let's get this stuff up here so we can see it. There's the parents, here's the students. All right, the data that I want right now is in these two fields, okay? And if I were to put this stuff in this table manually, here's what it would look like, all right? Here's Bobby Kirk, all right? So that's student one, okay? And his parent one, is uh, parent one, so that's Jim Kirk, okay? Student one also has a parent two, which is record five, see that? So there's student one, there's student one, and his two parents are one and five, see that? So that's what that data would look like in this table. All right, the next student, uh, Sue Kirk, she's got two records also, so two, two, and what are her two parents? She's got parent one and parent five, same two parents as Bobby. See how that works? Okay. But if you got thousands of records in here, you're not going to copy these all by hand unless you want to hire a temp or you have a, uh, an intern. You can make them do it for free, but then you got to deal with errors and stuff. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an append query to copy all of this data and all of this data into this table. How do we do that? Well, Let's close all this stuff up for now and let's go create a query. Create query design. Oh, before we do this, by the way, back up your database. Hang on. There's my slide. 
I should put like a Danger Will Robinson robot on here, right? Back up your data before you do anything involving major changes to your tables. All right, so far we really haven't done anything destructive, but an app pen query yeah, 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 could run into some problems. Any kind of an action query, back up your data. Of course, you should be backing up your database every night. If you don't know how, go watch this video. I'll explain all of it to you. Back up your stuff, back up your computer, back up all your documents, everything, and your databases. I like to back up my database before I do any major changes to it, even though I have a nightly backup. If I know I'm going to sit down and be making some changes, I make a manual backup. Just copy the file. All right, so we're making an app pen query. Where's the data coming from? The data is coming from our student table. So that's all we need over here from the from. Okay. And now that you got the from in here, we're going to click on append. Where is the data going to? Where are we appending it to? Well, we're adding it to our junction table, parent x student t. Hit OK. Now you got the append to down here. All right, what data has got to come out of here? Well, we need the student ID and the parent ID. Now, we have to run this as two separate queries okay and I'm assuming this is usually the kind of thing that you run once and you're done you know right one and done you run it once right you, you copy the data over and now your database is fixed you can move forward unless this is something where you're getting this data like you know you get a weekly download from the main office and you have to do this all the time there's no need to save this query right you're not going to be using it more than once to just fix your data but again that's up to you so the student ID that's easy it goes right in the student ID field Okay, parent one ID doesn't match up down here because it's going into parent ID, All right? You got to run this twice because if you try to put this down here and do this, you're going to get an error message. If you try to run it, you get duplicate output destination. So you have to do it two passes, one for parent one, one for parent two, and it copies the data in the same field. One more thing you might also want to do. Since we've got some zeros in here, you don't want to copy those over, right? If you look on our student table, right, you got some zeros. I don't need those records. So you can come down here and you can say the criteria in here is not zero like that or greater than zero, whatever you want to put in there. Uh, if you got null values, you can say is not null, right? But you don't need those records. All right, so now I'm ready to run the query, run it. Boom, I have my warning messages turned off. Go watch my app and query video if you want to learn how to turn the warning messages off. But if you look in here now, you should have, there you go. There's all the parent ones. Okay. And now we'll just switch this to parent two. And then we'll run it again. Ready? Run it a second time. Don't keep clicking that because you're going to keep adding records. Be careful. Okay. And there we go. So I've got a total of 13 records here. And if I check, I should have, if I go into student T, I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 entries between those two fields. So that's right. It worked. There you go. If you want to save this, you can, right? We'll just save this as our uh, append uh, parent Q, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. I'm not going to use this again. I'm done with it, but I'll save it for you guys in case you want to see it. It's gold members, right, in your download. And that's that. There we go. Now we've got our junction table that has all of the same data that the student table had in it here. We can now find this data in this table. And now we can base this data on a form that we can put in as a subform on the student form. Make sense? We can get rid of this stuff too now. Again, back up your database first, but now I don't need these fields anymore, right? Goodbye. Delete. Right, which means I also don't need those combo boxes in here. In fact, they don't work anymore because the, the data is gone. So we can get rid of these. Right, we'll save that. And now we can make a subform and put it in here. And it's going to look just like this. So we can pick multiple parents. And we'll have the parents that we just at pen copied over in there already. And we'll do that in tomorrow's video. You know the drill. Tune in tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. And we'll finish building up this student form with the subform on it, right? And if you're a member, you're going to watch it right now because that's one of the benefits of being a member. So that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. 
Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check him out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members... Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. 
You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.